All right, hello. It's uh, it's time for another review. <laughs> been a, been about a two weeks or so, and I've got a gun that I really want to cover. Um, the Schrodinger. Uh, it's the NSO Directive Reward Saw Machine Gun, and it is junk. Seriously, it might be the least worthwhile Directive Reward in the entire game. It is terrible, and that's why I want to cover it because I want to save someone from the pain of having to unlock this thing. So basically, what the Schrodinger is. So you know your Tenku and your Kappa, where they shoot multiple pellets at once? And how, like, the Tenku is low fire rate, high damage, but spread across four pellets. Kappa is medium, across three pellets. Schrodinger is fast fire rate, across two pellets. It's not very good. So, you get an 896 round per minute fire rate, which is, it's good. I mean, you're competing with stuff like the Armistice. But the problem is, you only do 60 damage a pellet, and you only fire two pellets. So you do 120 damage, which really means you do 112 damage when it comes to effective breakpoints. This is bad. You're looking at an 8-shot kill when you're only firing at 900 RPM. It's it's not good. You don't kill anything fast. Like It is atrociously slow to kill people with this thing. In addition, this is the only pellet-based weapon in the entire game where firing uh, a bolt, like, it says you have 66 rounds in a magazine, okay? You really have 33, because whenever you fire it, it consumes two rounds at once. I would like to note that this is unique to this gun. The Kappa doesn't do it. You see I'm only losing one round of the magazine per shot, and I, and the tank doesn't do it either. Like, it's the only gun in the entire game to do this. I have to assume this is an oversight on the purpose of developers, but I have no clue, man. It's... <laughs> It's not good. <laughs> See, you have a bad magazine size, you have a bad DPS, the accuracy isn't very good because your pelt spread of 0.33 is just okay, and other than that you have the same soft stats as every other submachine gun, when you need to be landing both pellets too, keep in mind. It's not like Tengu or Kappa where you can kind of get away with missing one pellet, yeah you lose a lot of damage, but you still have a little bit of DPS. You, you go down to 60 damage if you only land one pellet. <laughs> At which point you're looking at like 14 bullets to kill someone, if not more. <laughs> so, you have to be landing both shots. And it just, it's just not good. Like, hopefully you're already starting to see why this gun is junk. It's extremely unreliable. It doesn't even kill fast when you do land your shots. It doesn't have particularly good recoil. It doesn't have good soft stats. The velocity's bad. I mean, it's traditional for some machine guns, but... It's just, it's just, there's no point to this gun. Like, at least with other wacky submachine guns, like the Tengu, it hits really hard. It's your only 200 damage option if you're not on NC. Or even stuff like the Hailstorm. It's bad, but at least you have a massive magazine to make it work. <laughs> like, this thing is just junk. <laughs> I mean, you get the standard lineup of attachments for sights. Um, with the barrel, uh... You can honestly run either of them. Um, I would advise running neither, but the hybrid suppressor is definitely better. But if you want to try and make some like weird aim down sights build work, the comp is viable somewhat. <laughs> uh, on your rail, either go laser or grip. Grip if you're going for that wacky ADS build. Laser's just good otherwise. I do a word about the extended mags. You get seven more effective rounds of the magazine, but that just doesn't it doesn't really change anything. Like. The magazine is big, it's just, you're never going to, eat. here's, okay, here's what I'm trying to say. If you kill someone, it's going to take the bulk of your magazine anyway, because of how unreliable this gun is. Adding those 14 extra rounds, 7 effective, keep in mind, won't really allow you to do anything more with the magazine. It's not like the Cyclone, where adding 10 rounds gives you, you know, another kill or two if you're good. F 7 extra rounds in this thing doesn't do anything for you. That's not even enough to kill someone with body shots. <laughs> like, it doesn't do anything. Uh, and for ammo, HVA is a trap. Runs off point. It's like every other submachine gun in the game. So that's that's the Schrodinger by itself, okay? Now let me show you why it's really bad. Just click the compare stats button. This is the PMG-100. It is the regular, quote-unquote, starter submachine gun. You know, it's, it's your base submachine gun. You don't start with it unlocked, but... 
you know, it's like it's like a cyclone or an armistice or an aerodonic. Like it's the first submachine gun for all intents and purposes. Okay. The PMG one hundred. The only downside it has over the Schrodinger is that it only does 84 damage to max range compared to a potential 100 from the Schrodinger. It has a better magazine, unless you take the extended bag on the Schrodinger, which we've already covered, it's not worth it. Uh, it has slightly lower max damage, but this just means that the Schrodinger can get away a little bit more with a couple extra meters, but it doesn't really amount to anything. You have slightly better velocity, which doesn't matter on the PMG 100. And, like, here's the thing. The PMG-100 basically does exactly what the Schrodinger does, except it's more reliable. That's all you can say about it. I don't think the PMG-100 is a good submachine gun in any way. In fact, the whole NSO submachine gun lineup is just bad. But if you want to use the Schrodinger, just use the PMG-100, it's better. Or, if you really need a pellet submachine gun, get a Kappa, get a Tengu. Like... It just doesn't make sense why you would use this thing. In fact, even in the description, it remains unclear what the original purpose of this project actually was. They're damn right, because this thing is not useful. <laughs> and with all my complaining about the gun and showing you why this thing is horrid, uh, to the usual a little bit of live gameplay, uh, Off Hours Connery, again, Watterson's Redemption, should be okay, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> Should be a good fight to kind of show you what this weapon is all about, or rather, what it doesn't do. Not like most submachine guns, use it on the infiltrator. It's just best on the infiltrator. Because that way you can at least get the drop on people more recently. Um, you can make it work on a light assault, but I wouldn't advise it because it just doesn't have the DPS to be reliable. And it kind of works on heavy because you have the shield to make up for the DPS difference, but it's just it's just not good, man. It's just not good. Like, you can make it work. But I have not found a single situation where I genuinely believe the Schrodinger has ever made a difference over another submachine gun. Like, this is at a soul, keep in mind. The weapons here are not particularly great, but there is no situation where the Schrodinger offers something more that Kappa doesn't, that a Punisher doesn't, that a PPW doesn't, that a PP... Like, you get my point? It's just... There's just not a use to this gun. Of course, if you're putting in the time to grind the Naraxi weapon on NSO, you're probably good enough to make it work. But... Why would you ever unlock the Schrodinger when you could unlock the new It just got nerfed, but it's still a fairly solid carbine. Or the Gillelay. Or the Feynman, even. Like... If you're willing to go for an Araxi weapon on this faction, just grab something that's actually good, or at least interesting, and not awful. <laughs> like, there's really not much more I could say about this thing. It is horribly unreliable, even more so than the tank. And I can think about that a lot in my Kappa round, keep in mind. It's just, it's just not a good gun, man. It also really doesn't help that the NSO submachine gun directive is just not a good directive to begin with. I was thinking about covering this specifically in a video on its own, but I'll probably just include it here. Basically, so on the regular factions, when you're doing your submachine gun directive, you're going to use your Empire specific options, and then do maybe one or two common cool submachine guns. So let's say you're on a C, you do Cycle and Blitz Delanius, and then you do, like, you do PDW or Punisher. Or on TR, you do Armistice Jackal, PDW and Punisher. Like, you're always using your Empire-specific options. On NSO, you don't do this. You use the common pool options, because the NSO submachine gun lineup is bad. As I've already stated, the PMG-100 is, yeah. And then the other options are basically just slight variations on it that don't really work. <laughs> Like, on NSO, you do Tengu, you do uh, PDW, you do MPD, you do Punisher, you do the common pool submachine guns, because your other options are just bad. And this is why the Schrodinger really suffers, is because it takes already a bad weapon platform in the BMG 100 and crafts a gimmick out of it that is utterly useless. This is actually a problem with a lot of directed guns. 
A directive gun can kind of be inherently bad, no matter how many gimmicks you throw at it, if the platform it's built on is already not that good. Look at something like the Dark Star. He sounds wonderful on a medic, because then you don't ever have to sit down and reload it when you're constantly swapping in and out of the mod control. But the Pulse RBS-1 isn't a particularly good uh, assault rifle. Sure, you can gimmick the Dark Star up, but it doesn't save it from the fact that the weapon it's built on is just not that good. And it's the exact same story here with the Schrodinger. They could have thrown a bunch of gimmicks at this thing, but it's just not that good because the PMG-100 isn't that good. And it's one of the things I think Rogue Planet might want to take a look at in the future when designing the record weapons, if they ever do another round of them, say. Base, inherently basing every single directed weapon in the game off of the starter weapon for its class is not a bad idea, and it's a good way to show, like, here's what you started with, here's a special version of it. But the problem is when the starter version of, like, when the starter weapon is not good, it means that the directed weapon is also just going to be underwhelming. The NSO directive somewhat inverted this by actually being kind of interesting. For example, the Billalay is the XMG-100, but it's turned into a 750 143. So it's actually, like, a pretty okay LMG. Or the Newton actually takes the CB-100 and makes a really interesting gimmick out of it by kind of making it a pseudo-tanto. Or uh, the Feynman takes your standard BR-100 and gives a .75 ABS. Or the Einstein is a standard SR-100, but you have no damage drop-off in exchange for worse stats elsewhere. Sure, it's not particularly good, but at least it's kind of interesting. Schrodinger is kind of interesting, but it's not interesting enough. It's nothing that you can't get elsewhere. It's the problem. Yes, the pellet gimmick is interesting, but you have a Tegu and you have a Kappa. <laughs> it's nothing that you can't get elsewhere. And better at that. It's just, it's just that. Why they chose to make this gimmick the gimmick of the Shodan. If they wanted to make the PMG interesting, perhaps they would have done a, I don't know, a reverse, where they take the regular PMG 100 and they flip it around so that it fires slow but hits hard. Then it would be a pretty interesting weapon and for fiddly niche that's not currently present in the NSO submachine gun lineup. We know they can do this because they've messed with the uh, fire rates and damage models of other NSO directed weapons. So why didn't they do it here? It's just strange, man. Like, the description really does sum it up perfectly. It's unclear what the purpose actually is. There's just, there's no time where this gun will be what you want to be holding. Because of just how horribly unreliable it is. I consider myself a pretty alright player, but, like, this thing is just not good, man. Granted, I will also say this is Watterson's Redemption in off hours. It's not that good of a fight. Hopefully this guy deploys this under. Give us a nice little flank if he does. Be kind of cool if he did. There we go. Um, but it's just... It's not good at range, because with only two pellets, as soon as one miss, your damage just falls to the floor. It's not particularly good at close range, because being an 896 at 120, it just doesn't have enough DPS to compete with other close quarters options. You can't reliably get headshot kills with it, because you're still relying on the pellets to hit. That's a maximum. Ow. It's just... It's just not worth your time. It, it's just not worth your time. Like, this is a problem that a lot of directives, unfortunately, suffer from. But the Schrodinger is the worst example of it that I have seen in the entire game. Hell, I only got this thing because I'd already had three submachine guns harassing before the Reaver, uh, the NSO overhaul happened. Like, I love my submachine guns. I've harassed to nine of the damn things. But this is not worth your time. There's a infiltrator right there. I am terrible at this game. It's just... I know I'm repeating myself at this point, but you really cannot understate just how atrocious this thing is. It is... It's just not good. It's just bad. Like, even some bad weapons in this game still have niches where you can kind of make them work. No. The Schrodinger is just junk. It's just junk. 
Show me one situation where a Schrodinger excels over every other submachine gun in the game, and I will be amazed. Because for the life of me, I can't find this. Normally, I hold off weapon reviews until I've gotten pretty far into the Araxium or have Araxium did. I meant I just barely crossed the gold on this thing. Like, it's just bad. It's 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 just it's genuinely the worst weapon I've ever used in this game. <laughs> like it is just genuinely horrid. I don't have anything more to say. It's just bad. <laughs> Like, it's just, like, this directive is so bad on NSO because you don't do anything that's on its faction anyway because the PMG 200 and the 3XB are junk. So if you're going to be harassing four common pool submachine guns anyway, just go get a Tempest or a Scorpios or the Shuriken. Like, every other directive SMG is better than this heap of junk. And all of the other directives on this faction are better than this heap of junk. It's just pointless. It, it's... Uh, it's so bad. I don't even want to use this thing anymore. Ugh. Alright. Well. That's... That's all I can say on this thing. Ugh. Thanks all. Just don't get this gun. It's not worth your time. <laughs>